Welcome back to Web Cafe AI, where we do daily chat GPT and AI videos on how to leverage it for your personal and business life. We're going to be looking at Zapier's new features, which is tables, so stay tuned. In order to get access to tables, you simply just need to come over to this sidebar right here, click tables, and then you'll get directly to what I was just looking at. And we'll be able to create our first table today. I want to give you a simple tutorial, a rundown of what's going on here and how to leverage it for your business. All right, let's go ahead and begin here. We're going to go ahead and hit create. We're going to call it client outreach as I'm going to do a very simple flow here. You can add a description if you choose to. You can add or upload data from a CSV. And then the only template we have access to right now is a to do list, which is fine. We're going to be able to learn how to leverage a to do list in Zapier. Start off, understand that with Zapier tables, essentially you can have the ability to add a zap in the specific column. So when you drag a variable or a fixed piece of text, it will automatically do whatever is outlined in that zap. So this will make more sense as we build out this flow. So to start off, let's go ahead and just say we identify the task as uh, client outreach. And then obviously that little checkbox is whether we did it or not. So what we wanna do here is even add a date. So let's say we're doing client outreach today. And let's go ahead and add a column here. We're going to call this column um, email. And then the type is going to be, we can go ahead and choose text. But as you see here, when you create different columns, you have the choice of a bunch of different field types, text, long text, date, number, currency, checkbox, drop down, email, phone number, link, and button. Let's go ahead and put actually, let's go ahead and put email because that's actually what we're dealing with here. And then the icon, we can go ahead and choose Gmail as that is gonna be what we're gonna be building our flow with, which will make sense very soon here. So we go ahead and hit create. We can't add the zap yet because it wants us to create the column first. So once it's been created, I don't want my email to be on the far right of this table. Let's go ahead and drag it over so we can deal with it first. And the idea of what we're gonna do here today essentially is I'm gonna input the client's email and then I wanna automatically have a Zapier go that sends out a template slash just sends out an email to that client and specifically for us, we're going to be using AI to do it. Now, before we build that out, let's go ahead and see the UI here. What can we do here? First thing you can do here is since I'm identified as the owner, in theory, I could share this to-do list with someone else, maybe part of my team. You can add hidden fields here that maybe only you can see essentially and that the individuals that join that are lower ranks can't necessarily see. You can go to the settings here, you can change the name, you can add a description, and then this will become more important later in this tutorial about sending records, whether it's pending or automatically when it's like identified by the Zapier. And from here, you can go ahead and see how many zaps are being used in the table, whether there's filters or not, and whether there are hidden fields or not. Lastly, you can come up here and you go ahead and download all records if you have like a really big uh, table that you want to like push towards some other part of your business. All right, let's go ahead and build out this simple flow so you can get a better idea of what we can do here. So we're going to go ahead and edit field. We'll go ahead and go to zaps. We're going to say create a zap. And then it's going to be basically create a zap with the trigger of identifying it recognizes that it's in that column. So we're going to go ahead and say to do list zap one. That is fine. We're going to do the trigger field as email. So it already knows all this information because it's automatic. So we can go ahead and test it and there should be no data in there already. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to input a test email here, just our courses email so that we can see that as we build out the flow. Okay. So I went ahead and put our courses email there and we're going to go ahead and jump back over to that zap that we just created. So you see it shows up here. We can go ahead and hit edit. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can retest that flow. So then I can understand essentially where the email is being grabbed and identified by the record, bold record B. And then we'll be able to see right there. F4 is where the data is being grabbed here. So we can go ahead and understand now when we build out the flow, what to do. All right. So before we jump into this chat GBT block, let's go ahead and build out another table row here or table column so we can grab that data and make sure that's inputted into the email as well. When we build out this AI generated email. To do so, let's go ahead and add a new field here and we're gonna call it the field name industry. And we're gonna do the field type as text and we don't really need an icon for this. We're gonna go ahead and just say create here. In the theory they use icons, obviously you could probably tell that maybe for a Slack zap, you would put a Slack icon. Industry, we're gonna go ahead and put in construction. And then obviously you can add more columns depending on the context of what you're planning on doing with this table. But for now, we understand that the industry's construction that is associated with that email. So let's go ahead and retest this flow real quick. 
All right, perfect. So as you see here, we got construction, our courses email, and let's build out this very, very general uh, email. I just wanted to show you the potential of what the Zapier tables can do. So we're going to say based on this client's industry, we do semicolon parentheses. We're going to go ahead and grab the industry construction. Perfect. Um, we are, we're going to give context here. Context. We are an AI automation automation agency called Web Cafe. We're going to say generate a welcome email template. And then let's see if that is sufficient enough. We'll go ahead and mess around with it more if we need to. We're going to up our model here to GBT4 as we're dealing with more comprehensive uh, content here. And then we're going to give a memory key of email zap. And the purpose of a memory key, think of it like ChatGBT. It just knows how to do specific outputs. And we're going to go do one other thing here. We're going to say generate a welcome email template. Give two tones. We're going to get a little bit of options here so that when we plan on possibly sending this, we're going to want to like have the option of like what kind of tone we want to give this individual. All right, perfect. So I went ahead and generated, as you see here, it looks like it reached a token usage max. I'd probably want to shorten this email so we could give out two tones here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So you can understand how to use parameters. So we're gonna add a parameter block here. Um, use a max of two sentences per email template. So this allows me to essentially get a full two toned email here rather than, you know, the second toned email getting cut off. So we're gonna go ahead and retest that. All right, so as you see here, now we're getting both the tones and in full, so that's perfect. Let's go ahead and add our next block here, which is gonna be the Gmail block. And essentially this is what you're gonna notice here is now we're using the data that is also created. So we're gonna do create a draft and continue here. We're gonna choose our courses account. I'm just gonna send an email to myself. Uh -huh. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and do the two to the record of email. And then the subject we can make in theory a chat GBT subject here. Um, so I can add another block here, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to add chat GBT test. And then from here, we can go ahead and put the body here that we just created Come down here. And then we can add attachments, labels, signatures from name from BBCC, CCC, so on and so forth. But for now, we're going to go ahead and skip this test. And then I'm going to make this Zapier active and we're going to see all of it connect. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue here. We're going to delete this block. I'm going to hit publish. All right, let's jump back over to the Zap table. All right, so we have it set. So basically the records are pending. So it doesn't automatically just send it out right when it gets something, which is probably what you want um, from here. Let's go ahead and change it a little bit. Let's say healthcare is the industry we're dealing with here. And then let's say we use the same email. So I'm going to go grab that email. Okay, the email has been grabbed. Make sure your zap is live. Once it's live, let's go ahead and see what it does. All right, so now that we have set that up, I'm just gonna go ahead and come up here, choose which zaps to run. I've selected the row. I'm gonna click this one. We're gonna say send to zaps. All right, so it says it's been triggered. In order to see if it has been, we're gonna come back to the zap we just created. We're gonna go to history, and then we should see a little box here. Perfect, it is playing out. And from here, you're gonna be able to see it play out. Now, if you're more interested in understanding the cost associated with a run like this, make sure to check out that video right there as I go over a nice little monitoring Excel sheet that I created that is completely free that you can use yourself. But for now, let's jump back over to our courses. This should be an email to myself and it should be set as a draft. Let's go ahead and see when it comes in. There you go. So we got our fixed text here of ChatGPT test. And then we have our two toned uh, emails that I just created here. And then on top of that, we put in the industry as healthcare. So we grab that data as well. And as you see here, this is tailored for healthcare. Obviously, you can add way more variables to your spreadsheet. You can add a lot more stuff to the table. You can do way more stuff with your table just overall with different Zapier flows you can have in each row. But for now, you see the potential of what tables can do for Zapier. All right, so that wraps up this tutorial. I want to give you a brief overview of what Zapier Tables even is and what you can do with it. If you felt like you learned something, make sure to like the video. It is completely free and it helps us here at Web Cafe AI. And if this video was enjoyable and you felt like you learned something, go ahead and check out our other videos on these topics as I plan on doing way more videos when it comes to Zapier's new features that just got released and more specifically how to leverage AI in these new features. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. 
And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Web Cafe, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.